When I wrote The Essence of Perfume, the motivation was a very simple one. Uh, I'd always, always hoped that I would meet a person that I could train to be my apprentice. I imagine that literally about every two weeks I have somebody write into my office saying, I want to come to work with you, I, I don't want to be paid, I just would like to come and work, I'd like to do an apprenticeship or I'd like to train as a perfumer. I've met many people but have never met the person that I would want to spend years of my life training. And that's a very sad thing. And so when I wrote the book, I wrote it with the idea that many of the things that I know, a lot of which are anecdotal, were put somewhere for posterity so that another generation and generations to come can look at it if they're interested and find reference uh, to, to, to my work and my thoughts. The original book sold out. Um, I was very surprised to see that it was selling on Amazon for between £600 and £1,500 for a copy. It became a cult thing. And so the publishers asked me whether I would like to have it reprinted. And I said no, uh, well, I said yes and no. I'd like for the book to carry on its life, but I'll use it as an opportunity to rewrite the book and also to totally re-illustrate it. So if you like, it's almost a brand new book. It's certainly a, a new version of an old book. But um, I wanted to write a book that explains every aspect of perfumery because I don't think such a book exists. So it talks about the biology behind the sense of smell, it talks about the raw materials, the extraction methods, what really is an eau de parfum, what is perfume. When we use words like chypre, oriental and floral, what does it mean? How do you make a chypre perfume? Then it looks at the history of perfume from antiquity to the end of the 20th century, and then the story picks up again in 1882 when modern perfumery began with the creation of Fougère Royale by Ubigon and uh, Jiki by Guerlain. And it looks at it decade by decade, talking about the, the important perfumes that have shaped uh, the perfumery industry. Toward the end of the book, there's a section on the bottle makers, focusing particularly on Baccarat and also Lalique. Lalique, of course, started uh, contemporary perfume packaging. And then there's a small prediction in the back of what happens next. And what's interesting, if you look at the old book, there was also what happens next, and every single thing I predicted in it has come totally true. And it wasn't vague, it was very precise. Whether what I predicted this time will come true, I'm not sure, only time will tell us.